So when it comes to liquid coating or powder coating, one of the important parameters is film thickness. And what I mean by film thickness is the actual thickness of the coating that's over top of the substrate. So some of the things um, that are affected by film thickness are the aesthetics of the part, so how it looks, um, how well the part's gonna hold up, and um, how good a corrosion protection the part has is dependent on film thickness. And just how the coating is going to perform um, out in the field, film thickness actually affects that. And we're gonna go through each one of these things. So aesthetics, that's a pretty obvious one. If you have a lot of film thickness um, to the point where it's way too much, you're gonna have runs, right? You put way too much film thickness on, you're gonna start seeing runs in paint. Um, powder coating, you can get to run. Um, but usually really thick film thickness and powder coating is gonna show up more as a rough finish um, because of back ionization and some really, really bad orange peel. So that's, so that's if you're too thick. If you're too thin on film thickness, you're going to probably be able to see the substrate underneath still if you're super thin, or it's just gonna have kind of a grainy look um, or a really, really tight orange peel. So when we say orange peel, it's a pretty broad term. Um, and depending on how thick the film is, you can go through a range of different orange peels. Usually if it's really thin film, it's usually a tight orange peel. Um, so like the, the divots in the substrate are really close together and tiny. Um, when you get closer to optimal film thickness, you're gonna have a really smooth finish. And then usually when you get too much film thickness, it's hard to get some orange peel again. Um, it's usually a wider orange peel, larger divots. Um, when it comes to corrosion protection, uh, film thickness is also extremely important. So what we mainly focus on at, at Kaiser is usually industrial type applications. We're either blasting coating off of a part that's rusty right now, an old coating and rust, we're blasting that off and then we're uh, gonna coat it again or we're just starting from scratch, it's a brand new piece of metal, and we're trying to make it look good, but a lot of the stuff we're doing is industrial, so we're trying to protect, put a protective coating on that's gonna hold up for a long time and not allow the substrate to rust or corrode. So it, I think it's, it's pretty straightforward and obvious that if you don't put enough coating on, and it's super, super thin, you're not protecting that part very well. Uh, the weather and elements are gonna get through that coating really quickly and down to the substrate and start to rust or if it's aluminum corrode it. Um, usually it's obvious when your film thickness is too thin. Uh, a customer could usually even tell because if it's way too thin you can just see through it. If it's white you see a dark color through it. It really could be any color and you can just see down to the substrate. So obviously way too thin a film it's not going to protect that part. So Another thing that can happen when um, parts are getting blasted before they're getting coated, it could look like when uh, when you're done with the part that you have enough film thickness, it looks great. But you have to remember that um, when you're applying a coating over a blasted substrate or a substrate that has a surface profile, you have to make sure that you're filling up that profile with film thickness and then on top of the profile, you need to build some film thickness. So in those situations, you need to, if you don't have enough film thickness, again, that's gonna to lead to corroding because parts of the substrate are peeking out through the coating. Um, when we're talking about film thickness and corrosion protection, it's kind of like, well, what range do we need to be in? How, how thick are we talking? And, and in the coatings world, when we're talking in terms of film thickness, are we talking, you know, like, an inch, um, we talking a foot, we talking microscopic. Um, so the main measurement that we use is mils. How many mils of paint or powder coating do we have on the part? And one mil is one one thousandth of an inch. So we're talking pretty, pretty thin, okay? Um, to give you an idea, a sixteenth of an inch is 0 0.06 inches, 
0.0625 inches. So that's like 60 thousandths or so. Um, so we're talking, when we're talking in mils, we're talking 1,000 versus 60 thousandths. Big difference. So the coating film thickness that we're talking about is very thin. Usually if you're trying to have good corrosion protection in an industrial type application, you're going to be looking for around four to eight mils. It's, it's pretty pretty good range. You could see up in the 10s, 12s, 14s if you're doing a multi-coat system and really trying to have extreme amounts of corrosion protection. But typically a four to an eight mil range for an exterior application where you are corrosion protection is the main focus. Four to eight mils is going to be a pretty good range, powder coating or liquid coating. Now, for you car enthusiasts out there where, where it's more auto body painting, Kaser doesn't do much of that. We do a little priming, but we don't do any um, finish coating and, and clear coats and all of that. Those are going to start being into thinner films. Um, when you're getting into automotive finishes where aesthetics is really the most important, obviously corrosion protection is still there and important, but aesthetics is probably at the premium when you're in the auto industry. And so those are usually quite a bit thinner film uh, builds and that's gonna be kind of a different classification of paints that are designed to apply thinner films. They usually are doing thin films with multiple coats. So they're getting their corrosion protection from the multiple coats and they are slowly but surely building film thickness, but they're usually, you know, probably in that three to six mil range when they're done is probably the upper end and they're varying film thicknesses on their coats, um, typically thinner as they go up, because uh, as you get closer to the top, um, you already have film thickness underneath that's protecting the part, and you're just really going for aesthetics, making it look good when you get closer to the, to the last coat that you're putting on. So, um, they're really, if, if you said, what's the optimum film thickness, it, there's, you gotta ask a lot of questions. You have to know what what application it is, what the substrate is, uh, what what type of conditions is that part gonna be in, what's the main goal of putting a coating on the part. So there's really not you can't you can't just pinpoint an optimum. Um, it really depends on the project. So those are just rules of thumb that I just went through, um, but they could vary pretty significantly. So and then finally, how film thickness is going to affect how the coating holds up and the durability. Um, kind of aside from corrosion protection, let's we already covered that, so let's set that aside for a minute and let's just talk about how the film itself is gonna perform and hold up. So how flexible is it? You know, if you if, if the part's gonna be bent or, um, you know, how, how flexible is that coating going to be? How good, how well does it hold up to impact resistance or rock setting it with chips and things like that? Um, how good is it going to hold up if you drop it or hit it with a hammer? How good is it going to hold up to scratches? So film thickness is going to affect all that. If you are super, super, super thick, like way too thick, um, you're going to chip really easy. Um, the coating's probably actually going to crack um, itself when it's drying so it's going to aesthetically look terrible and, and not even going to hardly perform at all because it's way too thick. Um, if you get too thin, you're probably, you're not going to be as scratch resistant or, you know, basically a really shallow scratch is going to be right down to the substrate, which is an issue. If you have a really, if you have a thicker coating, a more optimal film thickness, and you get a light abrasion or scratch, you know, it, it may mess up the aesthetics and you might see a scuff in the part, uh, in the surface of the, the coating, but it's not down to metal. Um, so your, your part can still perform well. The coating can still hold some durability. Um, chipping, again, if you're on the thicker side, it's gonna chip easier. Um, one of the things that can tend to happen when you're too thick of film thickness, in liquid coating, you have a hard time getting that film to fully cure. It's so thick, you could trap some solvents underneath, could never fully cure, or just take a really long time. Um, 
and then with powder coating you get a, a lot of film thickness sometimes it's hard to get that cured all the way through because the heat isn't getting all the way through um, getting all the way through the, the coating to heat up the part and so in terms of durability way too much film thickness is going to cause some curing issues and so now the film integrity is poor and can't really do much of anything. If it's not cured, it's not going to do anything that it's supposed to be able to do. It's, it's not going to be very durable at all. So in general, if you're too thin a film, it probably doesn't affect the performance of the coating as much. If you just were set aside corrosion protection, remember, we just look at all the other factors. It's really not going to affect flexibility, chipping, um, it's going to affect a little bit with scratching because you get right down to the substrate, uh, but it's usually more of an issue when you're way too thick because it's a lot easier to chip off, film might not be cured, um, usually it's going to have less flexibility, you got so much coating on there when you go to try to, like if you had it on a panel and just flex it, it usually it will start to crack or then lift away. So in terms of, you know, what would be bad for the durability of the coating, usually when you get way too thick, that's gonna be bad. Thin is also not great, but, but it doesn't seem to hurt the um, coating performance. At, at least from a, a layman's perspective, in terms of just like handling the coating, looking at it, seeing how it performs. Um, I don't make that statement based on like scientific testing that I've carried out. So if other people have, which I'm sure there's a lot that's going to be checking in on all these film thickness videos, chime in, let us know. But that's just kind of my personal leaning just based on um, my experience and dealing with coatings on a day-to-day -day basis.